see this um, blood count is up. And um, hopefully on Thursday, Tuesday morning, we're having a very low blood pressure appointment. You will see you will be receiving his uh, second treatment. So we encourage you to please pray much for the lady that burned. Pray for his brother also. And then pray much for folks that come to our doctor's temple. Uh, they will see you once you are here. So we encourage you to please. Um, that's now. Two pieces, my two pieces before the Lord. Thank you. Okay, heading into our final two congregations. Um, first of two. The Lily of the Rye, two five two, two fifty two. The Lily of the Rye, Father, Fred, and Jesus.
Father, who art in heaven, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you, O God, for your many blessings that God upon us. Lord, we thank you, O God, for your holy name, our house of God. Lord, we pray right now that God will be about to take this offering to my people. Lord, we use it to pray the night gospel. Lord, we pray most of all, as I will go forth, dear God, that there will be one. Here are all by way of social media, who would have the opportunity to hear the word of God. We pray that this will be glad that they become the Savior and all of the Jesus. We ask for your continued blessings upon the saints. Uh, we ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to sit with you for a few minutes. Uh, after we explain us, or we are asleep, we need to wake from sleep. We need to wake from sleep. Uh, we become, uh, we are in a state of apathy, but the Psalms have already read the scriptures for us this evening uh, from the book of First Samuel. Quite an interesting story. And you can see how we can just take things for granted when we should be speaking, we're quiet. Uh, when we should be standing, we're seated. And uh, we're in a state of apathy. I'm talking about us as individual Christians. And then the church as a whole. Apathy is killing us. Apathy is killing us. It's very important that we realize that we awake from sleep as we draw closer. We hear this clarion call throughout Romans and throughout the epistles of the, of, of the uh, written by the Apostle Paul, that the church wake up, and then we, 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 we have to be careful. The devil and his forces are fanning us individually to sleep and fanning us to sleep as a church. So let's pray to sleep. Father, thank you for your word. Forgive us of where we have sinned against you. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Pray for our from, from on high. Anoint me with your Holy Ghost. Before you stood up, Proclaim your word, you was anointed with the power of God. Lord, that same power is needed tonight by men all throughout our land, throughout our world, to share the gospel, to share the truth of the scriptures. And so we beg you for this of knowledge and understanding that comes from you. Lord, that you would move and help us to be better than when we came in. In Jesus' name, amen. Our uh, Psalms read from verse 1 to verse 9. And I just want to read verse 11 and 12. It says, And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came unto Beth, under Beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, If the, uh, the Lord helped us, and that's what Ebenezer means, the Lord help us. Um, now listen, that's the only thing that can help us today. Only God can help us. I was at a funeral yesterday, and at the funeral I listened as several persons got up and to speak about it. it didn't matter if these individuals were professing Christians or they were pastors, they got up and basically lamented uh, the condition, the moral and social conditions that we are now living in in, in, in our nation. Uh, I heard a young lady who was praying with the deceased for over 71 years on the deceased of a friend since the deceased was 14 years of age. And she started to talk about their life, 71 years. Now that's a long time to be praying. Uh, they were friends for 71 years. And she said, and this lady was so astute and so alive and so alert. I would imagine they've been friends for 71 years, they're around the same age. So the deceased was about 85. And this lady was talking about their childhood and how when they grew up, how it was so different. And she talked about the distinguished men and women that taught her in high school. And then she spoke about the conduct of children during their, uh, their, their days and how they were told that you um, wherever you go, you're in that school uniform. Uh, girls are not allowed, girls are not allowed to be loud boisterous and, and making a scene back in the day. Well, what a contrast, huh? And then uh, you, you were told that wherever you go, with that school uniform on, you represent that school, no matter where you are. What a contrast. I heard a lady say the other day at an event, a uh, young lady was misbehaving, and the vice principal said, uh, said uh, uh, she ought to be suspended. The parents said, what, uh, the lady of their parents said, well, she's not at school. So the vice principal said, you see what I'm about? Uh, anything 
think she does is a reflection of that school. It puts a, a stain on that school, and so there got to be some accountability with that. And so they were lamenting how times have changed, and uh, how the church, and how we as adults, men and women, how we have changed. And we can't blame the children, you know. It was our responsibility to teach them. It was, our, it was our responsibility, it was the women's responsibility to invest in their girls as, as, and their children as God has instructed them. It is, it is the responsibility of the aged men to be a pattern of good work to the younger men. So we have to take some of the blame for what we see going on in our streets, our homes. Our homes have to take some of the blame. Fathers have to take some of the blame. Mothers have to take some of the blame. Uh, uh, for what is transpiring. And so, uh, only person can help us in the situation that we're in is God. Amen. Only God can help us. And so, Ebenezer, that's what we need. We need Ebenezer. We need God to help us. Uh, I think the Bible said he took a stone, he set it between mist and shit, and he called the name of it e Ebenezer, which means, Lord, help us. May that be our prayer daily. Uh, may that be our prayer for our homes. May that be our prayer for our children. May that be our prayer for our, our nation's leaders. May that be the prayer for um, our, our, our pastors and our Christians everywhere. That God would help us. And do you know, I know I need the help of God. I don't know you, but I need God's help. I need God's help every second, every minute, every hour, every, every day, every week, every month, every year. I need Ebenezer. I need God's help. And that's what Samuel would say there. The Bible says, when God helps you, you're going to experience victory. So the Philistines were subdued and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the heart of the Lord is against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. I need the Lord's hand to be with me. I don't need the Lord's hand to be against me. I need God's hand helping me. You need God's hand not to be against you. You need God's hand helping you. Uh, and that's what we need today as a church. We are we are falling asleep and we need to be awoken. Uh, when my wife and you know, Shanti and Sister Woodside went to Hawaii, uh, she was able to read of the shocking events which led up to the destruction of the United States fleet at Pearl Harbor. You remember that? On that fatal day of December 7, 1941, the Japanese uh, fleet of planes attacked. Uh, we know that that attack was invited, was, was invited by the Americans all the way up. Uh, the Americans' failure to be vigilant. They weren't vigilant. And, and a lot of the attacks that you and I are facing today is because we are not vigilant. That's why the Bible says, be vigilant, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, as, as, as the devil, as, as the devil, as the devil he, uh, as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. So God has called upon me as an individual to be vigilant. God has called upon you as an individual to be vigilant. How many times? Take your Bible tonight and go home tonight and watch how much time Jesus says to his disciples, watch. Watch. And may I say to you this morning as an individual in 2023, it is important that you Watch. It is important that you be vigilant. You be vigilant about everything that is coming down the pipeline. You might not like Facebook, but get yourself a Facebook account and know about it. See what is being put out there and read your Bible so you can be able to defend what is being put out there. Get yourself an Instagram account. Read good books. Read stuff. Be alert. Watch the news. Know what's going on so that you can you will be able to stand against the heresies that are about to come to the world and that are already in the world. You're not a child of darkness. You hear me? You are not a child of darkness. Not one of you who named the name of Christ is a child of darkness. You are a child of light. And so you ought to be awake. We ought to be awake. America faced the problem in 1941 because they were not vigilant. The result was disastrous. The destruction of their fleet the co was the cause of tragic indifference. When comfort and ease, pleasures are put ahead of duty and conviction, progress is always set back. What makes us Christians shrug our shoulders when we ought to be flexing our muscles? 
muscles. You know what I mean? Be a certain thing for me to say, well, so what? No, you are a flex muscle. What makes us apathetic in the day when there are loads to lift, a world to be won, and captives to be set free? Uh, we cannot sit idle. Why are so many of us as Christians bored? When the times demand action, why are we bored? Christ told us that in the last days, there would be an insipid attitude towards life. Lord, help us. We need Ebenezer. We need Ebenezer. Lord, help us and take away the apathy, the sleep that we are now in. Our Father, that, that's, let's pray that Ebenezer will come in and help us so that the blindness to our visions can be removed. Uh, look around at your homes, your jobs. Look in, uh, in the country. Look in the church. There's a serious disease called apathy. And this disease is destroying us, the people, destroying our churches. Our text gives us a serious state of apathy that has crept into the nation of Israel. You say, yeah, yeah, this isn't new. Watch what the Bible says. Watch this. I don't know if you understand, but if you look at, at 1 Samuel 7 and verse 2, and you read this, this is really, really sad. The Bible says that it came to pass while the ark abode in Kajerium, that the time was long, for it was twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. God's presence is gone for twenty years. What a lamentable position. They cried about it. This is a serious state for twenty years. There was no relationship with the Almighty. My question as I read this was, where was the Christian voice? Sitting there shrugging his shoulders. Where was the prophet? Where was the priest? The text tells us that it got so bad that the people lamented. That means they groaned. That they bewailed their situation. And I'm telling you today, you are drawing close to the God every day, reading the Bible and praying. What you see going on in homes, what you see going on in our streets, what you see going on in our television, what you see going on in America, what you see going on in the Bahamas, you can't tell me you don't grieve. You can't tell me you don't say, what? What is wrong with us? How can we be accepting that? How can we be opening our doors to this? How? How? But when these things start to happen, we have to open our mouth when Israel started to cry. Uh, that means that they started to ruin their situation. Listen, the nation of Israel cried over their situation. I keep asking, why is it not recorded what Samuel was doing? For 20 years? I don't know. Did Samuel find himself in an apathetic state? He was there. I know he's going to be one of the leading persons to lead this revival. That's what's happening in here, First Samuel 7. A revival is about to break up. I believe for the first time in all my life of being here, I believe last week we got a little taste of what revival is all about. People coming to the altar and praying for lost people. And I passed here yesterday after I had no soul in the third court. The pastor side and came in and I passed here at uh, about 12 30 after picking them up and I believe it was Mary Harold and uh, Brother Sons and Brother Barry, they were gone. I know I missed a couple of names, but they were gone. They were gone. That's what happens when your heart and your life get revived. You want to win others. You want to tell others about it. You don't want to be in a state of a stupor of a silence. You want to be in an apathetic state. All of us, all of us must be careful lest we end up in this state for 20 long years. There was no relationship with the Almighty. Go long without God's presence. There's only two directions for us as it relates to our relationship with God away from Him and down. When you, when you don't spend time with God, there's only two places you can go away and down. You lie the priests of God and the sons that led the nation of Israel into some dark days. Papa and Phineas have been killed by the Philistine. And where it comes to something that the ark has been taken and the sons are there. But here it is. We 
Elias goes away, falls back in his chair, and breaks his neck. And some of the saddest words that can be said about an individual, some of the saddest words that can be said about a society, a nation, a family, an individual, is recorded in the scriptures that this happens. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 4 20, when I hope, oh God, I pray that Ebenezer will always be there to help us. I pray that Ebenezer will always be there to help me as an individual. He did help us as a church. He did even help us as a nation. You don't, want, you don't want God to remove his hand from you. You don't want God to remove his presence from you. You don't want God to remove his presence from your family. You don't want God to remove his presence from our nation. You don't, you don't want that. You want Ebenezer to help us. Some of the saddest words you can hear. For example, in 4, 21, the Bible says, I'm talking about his daughter, and she named the child Echabon. Saying the glory is the pilot from Israel. Because the ark of God was taken, and because of a father in law and a husband. Echabon is written, you want God to remove his presence from your life. You don't want Ebenezer not helping you. You don't want Ebenezer to remove his presence from your life. You don't want him to remove it from my life. You don't want him to remove it from Tabernacle Baptist Church. You don't want him to remove it. You do not want, to remove, want God to remove his presence from this country. But sometimes, I don't know the truth, but I, I challenge you. Take some time, and I don't agree with everything that happens on the station, but take your time and read some of the world news and see what is happening. Would you like to be living in Ukraine right now? Time to have an African nation, I want to say. I want to say Uganda, but I, I don't think that is correct. Sudan. Would you want to be living in Sudan right now? You gotta understand when God removes his hands, anything can happen to you. There's only two ways to go in God's presence. God's hand is not upon you as a people. I would say that God has moved his presence. If the Lord admits that God that Ichabod has been written over the nation of Israel and over their home, many homes Ichabod has been written over. We need, but what you need is Ebenezer, you need the mercy of God. You don't want God to take the joy of his Holy Spirit from me. And I pray his unction be upon me. I pray his unction be upon you. You should not want to live one day without the unction and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. You should not want to live one minute without the power of the Holy Ghost of God. May the Holy Spirit of God have the you and the Holy Spirit of God have control of your life. You'll have love. You'll have peace. You'll have joy. You'll have kindness. Uh, you'll put away evil speaking. You'll, when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of your life, evil speaking will have to go. When the Holy Spirit of God gets a hold of life, your life power will come in and you will be a bold witness for Christ. When the Holy Spirit of God gets a hold of your life, you can tell others about Him. When the Holy Ghost of God gets a hold of you, the Philistines, uh, the Philistines takes the ark. We know that over 20 years, these people, these people live without Him, without His presence. And we have a story about the impact of anarchy. His lady named Rosina, Rosina Hernandez was in college. She once attended a rock concert, of which once one young man was brutally beaten by another. No one made an attempt to stop the beating. Everybody watching and looking. That's happening. I've seen that happen over and over. You watch the social media, you'll see people getting beat up, come out, and what people are doing? They ain't trying to stop it. What are they doing? They grabbing their phones. They're recording it. People are laughing. People are saying it's funny. Some people are standing idly by and watching. God help us. We need evidence. And I'm not just, I'm not talking about things happening in the foreign land. I'm talking about things happening right in Freeport, Grand Bahama, right in Nassau, right in Andrews, right all across our land. We see it all the time. Apathy that is said thing. They said that no one attempted to stop the meeting. The next day rose up. Uh, was stuck down to learn that the young man that was beaten had died from the pounding. She nor anyone else had raised a hand to help him. She could never forget the incident of her responsibility as an inactive bystander. 
We are in our divine standards of people are coming in our way every day, dying and going to hell. We ain't saying nothing. People are doing things in our presence. Christians are committing things that they are not to be committing. People are saying things in our presence that they have no business saying it. No. And as soon as they say the Holy Spirit of God, if you read the Word of God, breaks in your mind and say, that's not correct. You are correct in it. What do we do? We stay silent. We're in a state of apathy. We're more afraid of them. The same saw had another judge. She saw another catastrophe. Car driving in the rain before suddenly skid and plunge into the Biscayne Bay. Car landed the head down in the water and only the tail didn't show it. In a moment, a woman appeared in the circle shouting for help and said, the husband, uh, saying her husband was stuck inside. This time, the young lady was here waiting for no what? She plunged into the water and tried unsuccessfully to open the car door. Then, found him on the back window, and other bystanders stood on the causeway watching. Probably watching and recording. First, she screamed at them, begging for help. Then, she cursed them, telling them there was a man dying in the car. Then, one man after another fight came together. They broke the safety glass and dragged the man out. They were just in time. A few minutes later, it would have been all over. Woman type was here for saving her husband and was there was elated. Riding an emotional high that lasted for a week. She had promised herself that she would never again fail to do anything she could to save a human life. And you doing everything you can to pluck, pluck someone from the dying. She had made good, she had made good on her promises. Then we look at all this that is happening. All I want to tell you tonight is open your mouth. No matter what it is. Open your mouth to tell someone about the Lord. Open up your mouth. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. He sold us off the cross. Lift high his royal and man. Lift high. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. The problem is that me, you, we sometimes find our state, ourselves asleep. Leo once said the penalty that good men pay for not being interested in politics is to be governed by men who are worse than themselves. I want to expand on that price that individuals, families, businesses, churches, and this country pay for people not being interested or being in a state of apathy is dangerous. My brothers and sisters, I can care less what people say. We have to refuse to sit idly by. And watch as the church is quiet. Yes, our church, our families, they need us. In our text, Israel was suffering. It was in a lamentable position because good men and women, good prophets, good pastors, good preachers, same thing with our countries, fathers, husbands, mothers, pastors, good Bahamian citizens are quiet. We need Ebenezer. We need to deal with this thing that the sleepless, the sleeplessness that we are having. Fourthly, the church of the living God needs to be awake. There must be something that we can do. And I'll tell you what we can do. We have to recognize our position. There must be a recognition, recognition of the lamentable position we're in. The Bible says, and it came to pass while the heart of God in the job jury. The time was long, but it was 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Things were so bad that Eli's son was sleeping with the women at the church, and no one was saying, any, saying anything about it. They were sleeping, they were quiet, no one was saying a word. Things going on, and people just shrugging their shoulders. Their priest was in a sad state, the people of God was in a sad position. Things were bad. Before we get better, we need to recognize and acknowledge exactly how lamentable our position really is today. We may get better until we come, until we look at ourselves in the mirror and say, We need help, please, sir. We need the help of God. Let me show you how bad it is in our country. I, I, I always wanted to do it, and last Sunday I got a chance to do it. But Randy, but Calvin, and I jumped in a vehicle. And we drove around for about maybe 15 minutes. We drove around to every church that we could find. We 
started from the garden forest and we go all the way around. We hit last Sunday, we hit 20 churches. We were calculating that we were going to the Senate. How many churches? We hit 20 churches. How many did go on Sunday evening? Three. Three. Are also true. Out of the 20 churches, we threw it down after him because he said they were not there because um, of his anniversary. Out of the 20 churches, four churches were open. So somebody was looking for a place, and the Holy Spirit was speaking to somebody, somebody was in need, and somebody was trying to find a church, or whatever. The gospel was a hospital for sinners. Was close. That is a lamentable situation. We have come to the place and we feel good that once on Sunday is good enough. And we are justifying it. When we were growing up, we would go to Sunday morning, Sunday school, Sunday evening church. We are the four parents. We have nobody to blame. We have not passed on the faith of our fathers to our children. You would be amazed at how many homes mommy and daddy get up in the morning and the children are sleeping in the bed and they come to church. But when you were growing up, you wasn't man or woman enough to dream it. Because if you dreamt it, you would jump up and run to the bathroom and throw your clothes. If you would have gotten the stuff and be out of it. So all of the moral teaching, the teaching in the Bible, the scriptures. I didn't learn the Bible in church. I learned the Bible at home. Church helped me with the Bible. I had to go to Sunday school. And in Sunday school, they taught you the Bible. There's a large percentage of Bahamian children that are growing up without morals, that are being taught all kinds of foolishness. You don't have to worry about your children being able to know what is right from wrong if you are teaching them those rights and wrong from home. I was a train of a child to raise you go. When he's old, he will not depart. We have to recognize the position that we're in. We're in a sad state. Families, schools, lamentable. You have to recognize your position. First time in three thousand a day, I will perform against Eli who I told him. Things which I have spoken concerning the South when I began, I will also make an end. He says, but I have told him that I will judge his house forever. The iniquity which he know it, dear. He didn't know it until he knew about it. Because he, his sons made themselves vile. Watch this. Elijah, the wicked children. Here's a God of Elijah, Chronicles 4. He said, his sons made themselves vile. And he, Elijah, restrained them not. You love them so much that you would allow them to do all kinds of foolishness and you didn't correct them. God says, I'm holding you accountable for that. Therefore, I have sworn in the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offerings forever. First Samuel 4 things got so bad that in one day Israel was beaten before the Philistines and, 98, and the 98 year old Eli. Dies in the presence of God, leaves Israel. Oh God, please don't make it wrong. There's one thing an individual, family, and nation cannot afford. Hell, we can't afford to lose, to lose the presence of God. I'm telling you, we can't. Don't care what education can't fix us, technology can't fix us. God's presence leave us, we will be in some problem. Lies God in all years, the act of God, which is symbolic of the presence of God, is in, is in she's in childbirth. And this should be a happy time. She said, No, God's presence is gone. None of us want to lose the presence of God. Moses 
saw God's presence. was so present and forth to Moses before he began his ministry. And Israel told God, in your presence, it's not going with me. I don't want to go. Bible says in Exodus 33, 14, Moses he said, My presence shall go with me, and I will give you rest. So I told Moses, and he said unto them, Moses told God, with thy presence, go not with me, carry us on our bed. In Exodus 33, 14, and 15. One thing the psalmist wanted, the sweet singer of Israel, a man after God's own heart, as Christian. It is imperative that we recognize this today. We recognize this now. We need God's presence. Psalm is said to the old Lord, cast me not away from thy presence. And he says, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. For over 20 plus years, Israel is without the presence of, of the Almighty. You know, we have to be careful that we do not excuse ourselves at false, false, and, and, and falling or false of believing we are okay. Over 20 years long, after the heart of God was gone, even after it was away in the hands of the Philistine for seven months, seven months and 20 years from Israel. You hear that? 20, 20 years and seven months away from Israel. Israel did not begin uh, to get out of harmony until they acknowledged they ate. You only get no better than tell you what makes you drunk. Tell you what makes you already need to abide. Tell you, I admit, God, I need to run from temptation. I need to run from sin. I need to be close to you. Tell you, admit that you need God help. He help you. I'll be the first step that I need this help. Every aspect of my life, I need this help. The truth is, as a whole, we might be in a lamentable position. That's fine. Just acknowledge it and get it right. The second thing, how we get out of this apathetic state? How do you get out of that state? Apathy, where you just shrug your shoulders and everything. People are saying all kinds of junk to you. You want to accept, you become so open to everything. Everything that comes uh, down the pipe, you're not standing on the word of God. How you get out of that? Realize that that's a sad state to be in. That's a lamentable position to be in. And let me tell you why you get out of this. This is how Israel got out of it. They realized the position they were in, and guess what they did? Uh, they, 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 they put themselves in a position to return to God. Anybody who's ever gotten away from God, the only way they got help was, was to return to God. And if you want help tonight, you have to return to Ebenezer. Because only God can help you. You can't help you. There's nothing good about you. There's no good in you. The only person that can help you is God. That's the only person that can help you. And Israel realized that after 20 years and 7 months, they realized that God was their help. That was the only way they got their help. So they return and get away is one thing. But you know, we better return. Thank God he's merciful. They got away for 20 years, and yet God was willing to help them. I don't care how long you've been away. I don't care how cold you've been. I don't care how cold you might be now. If you realize that you need Ebenezer, Ebenezer will help you. They got away. I remember that? But he returned. Solomon got away. Then I told now this woman, but he returned. Samson got away, as we read this morning, as we heard this morning. He got away from God. Uh, and he returned, eh? He returned in death, though. No, you don't want to return in death. Catch yourself. Prodigal son got away, but he returned and came to himself. That's the problem. The church of Jesus Christ today needs to catch itself. The church of Jesus Christ today needs to come to her senses. Things we are allowing, we've got to be mad. We've got to be crazy. We've got to turn back to the book. We've got to return back to Ebenezer. We've got to return to God. First Samuel 7, 3, the Bible says, the Son of the Son all those of us the same. If you do return to the Lord with all your heart, you have all your heart to that. You are walking away from him, return to him with all your heart today. Put away the strange God. And ask him from among you and prepare your hearts in the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the heart of the Philistine and the children of Israel that put away Balaam. And ask him to serve the Lord only. Even in apathy involves two things. Put away, put, put away some things the scriptures call strange God. I don't know what they are in your life. If there's some things in your life, you need to put away these strange gods. And they are causing you not to be the best Christian that you can be. And you know 
the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit of God will be the, 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 the in you, He lives with you, He He's controls you. Right there, He reveals you some things. I've got to go. He said, Sister Martin, I've got to go. I've got to go. I've got to go. I know you want me. I know you want to be close to me. But it can't be the two of us. You can't serve this and serve me. A person has to go. Those things have to go. God brings it to your mind. This is what you're listening to have to go. This is what you're watching have to go. You can't help both of us. These things gotta go. Bible says, Bible makes it clear that Israel puts the tool in there to put away some things. Whatever they might be, you're gonna return to me. You're gonna come back home. Some things gotta go. I believe it's not going nowhere until we return to Israel to put it on my Israel is now listening. Some people think they serve the Lord. Israel thought Israel was serving the Zidonian deity. Then they should be listening to the Almighty. You return to God, I believe it requires some things being up to go. And I believe it requires removal of some things that we, and I, I believe it requires that we prepare to see God and serve Him. Then you focus on the over the enemy cannot harm you. And you're seeking God, He will deal with the Philistines in your life. I don't know what it is. I can only talk about the things in my life, the first things in my life. You must seek, prepare, and serve the Almighty. People only do what they do to you because you are living in the state of happy away from the Almighty. You have to understand that happy requires that we are obedient to do what is said, what God says. Knowing where you are is one thing, doing something about it is another. The Bible says that the children of Israel did put away Balaam, Ashtoreth, and serve the Lord. So you got to put away some things, and then you got to make up your mind to serve the Lord. How do you make up your mind to serve the, the Lord? Well, I'm basically saying you have to come to ask for God and change. You have to ask Him for help. Do you want to change? Do you want God's presence upon your life? Do you want the power of God upon your life? Do you want Ebenezer helping you? If God help you, you can win. If you try to fight alone, you'll be afraid. You'll be afraid. Listen. In verse 7, the men of Philistine and the children of Israel gathered together to Mizpah. Then they had the children of Israel gathered together to Mizpah. The Bible says, the men of Philistine said that they were gathered together to Mizpah. The Lord of the Philistines went up against, uh, against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. You know why you're going to be so fearful? Because you want God's presence in your life. You need the help of God. You try to fight the battles alone. But look at, look, at, look at the contrast between verse 7. They were afraid. They were helpless. They were frightened. But look at verse 12. Then Simon took the stone and set it between Mitzvah and Shin. And called the name of the elders of the heavens and said, Head up, help the Lord help us. You can be in a state of fearfulness. And helplessness, or you can return to God and get help. It's your choice. And this is the amazing. God, God is powerful, brother, the sisters, is not going to do it for you. It's going to have to be you doing it yourself. You have to come to God on His terms. You have to make the step to come to God. Watch it. How do you make that step? You want to continue this state of revival and Drawing close to God and seeing the miracles of our fathers, he has what you have to do. He has what Israel did. The Bible says in, in verse 8 that the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us. He can't save himself. Nobody can save no one can save America except God. No one can help you except God. No one can deliver us out of the troubles that we're in except the Almighty God. And that He will save us out of the hands of the Philistines. That's how we pray. We gotta pray. We gotta pray. I believe that there's a number of people, maybe not, maybe not everybody that's here this evening. I believe everybody.
amen, that God's going to continue to minister. But there's going to be a work being done in our hearts and our lives. It's going to require the prayer. If God's going to help us, we have to continue to pray. Continue to pray, continue to read the word of God, and continue to ask God to increase our faith. When we do these things, we'll see God help us. Ever needs them. Because the great thing about it is that God wants to help us. He wants to help us. Let's start with our feet. Father, thank you for your word. Father, thank you for the truth of your word. Father, help us every day to be conscious, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Join us with your power. Lord, every day we beg you for this, for knowledge and understanding. We beg you to move in our life. I pray, God, for that one who doesn't know you as Savior tonight. I pray that you will come to a saving knowledge of Christ before it to be a day and a time and eternity too late. I pray if there's one watching, that they will realize that the trouble they're experiencing, the difficulties they're facing, Ebenezer can help them. The Lord can help them tonight. All they need to do, you have me, all they need to do, if you're watching, is bow your head and serve your hand. Wherever you are, and ask God to forgive you of your sin. Ask Him to come into your heart. Ask Him to save you. Accept the faith of Jesus made for you on Calvary's cross. If you do that tonight, he will come in and he will save you tonight. And listen, I can promise you that life will be a bed of roses. I can promise you that you will have no more difficulty. But I promise you that Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. He will help you. Christians, you're watching. You're sitting here. Oh, don't be quiet. Open your mouth. Be brave like a lion. Lift your voice like a trumpet. Cry loud and speaking up for Almighty God. Don't be a part of other man, other man's sin. Speak out against evil. Speak up. God, you're with us. God, is he prepared to go out of your own? Father, with us tonight. Watch over us. Bring us back to Wednesday. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great evening.